Hi everyone, that's your first video. We talk about our assembly language programming for our Consign 260. In module one, we have few video you will go over. So in this video, I will tell you the orientation, how this course will work and what we will cover in the assembly language course. So this class, originally we are in on ground, we meet twice a week. But now because of the pandemic situation, we all fully move our course online. So in order to have the instruction well to help you to learn fully, just like you do the on ground class, we will have twice a week for the Zoom meeting. Usually when we have on ground class, we meet twice a week. That will be the three hour class. So in the first one and a half hour, I will have the lecture. Then the second half we will do the lab. So since we are fully online, so we will not have the lecture hours during the Zoom meeting. Instead, all the lecture I will pre-record it. So before our Zoom meeting on Tuesday, Thursday, you should watch all the lecture video and get ready and take the note. So during our Zoom meeting, we will still have one and a half hour. But this one and a half hour, I will focus on answer your question. And I will break you guys into group. So you will have the chance to work with other classmates during the lab hours in the breakout Zoom. So the lab hours may be not fully one hour. So I will have 30 minutes to help you guys work in the group. So the Zoom meeting actually, like I say, is not focused on the lecture. It's focused on I will answer your question after you watch the video. So then you have the chance to work with your classmates about the lab exercise and programming assignment. Every week we have one lab exercise and one programming assignment. Besides, you can ask me the Zoom question during the Zoom meeting. Of course, I have my office hour. So both my office hour and our Zoom meeting on Tuesday, Thursday will be in the same link. So about the grading scale, I will leave you to read through the syllabus carefully. So then if you have any question, right, I will answer your question during our first Zoom meeting. From the syllabus, I think you already see your textbook is assembling language for x86 processor. So here I was still using the 7th edition. We do have the new one, the 8th edition from 2020, but I didn't get the publisher for the textbook yet. So for this class, I will still focus on the 7th edition. And also the good thing is for the 7th edition, actually you can quickly search online they have the free version for the PDF copy, so you can have that. If you really, really want to get a textbook, if you really want to buy a textbook, then I will recommend you to buy the X edition. So then the seventh edition, actually only the first couple chapter, I will ask you to refer for your homework assignment. So if you want to have the soft copy, you can search online for the seventh edition. If we want to spend some money to buy the hard copy, I will recommend you to buy the latest version. That will be the 8th edition. We have the same author. Okay, so actually in the first week, uh, we will start introduce chapter 1. So here's the chapter 1, what we will cover in this um, for four section. So actually I break that into two modules. For this week, the first week is in our module one. I will talk about the, some simple example about the assembly language. Then on Thursday Zoom meeting, before Thursday Zoom meeting, you will watch some video to understand what is the virtual machine concept. So then next week in module two, I will talk about more about the data representation and the Boolean operation. So the first thing let's talk about you know you need to take the course about assembling language, but what is assembling language? So before we go over the assembling language, actually I want you to think about what's different between these three majors. I know most of you take this class, you will transfer to 
consign major, or some of you will transfer to computer engineering, or very few of you maybe you are interested about the electrical engineering. So for these three major, do you know the difference? Yeah, remember anytime you can post a video and ask your question. Because sometimes in the video, I will ask you question. So I want you to post the video and think first before you moving forward. So now is the good time you can post the video for a little bit to think about what's different between these three majors. Right, so as you know, when you major in computer science, you are totally software related. So the job you can do, you may be a programmer, you may be an application developer, you can be the database administrator, or you can do the testing QA, or you can work on the AI. So that's the software related. So most courses you take in from the computer science, you will learn different programming language. So you see for our school, we start from C++. Then you will learn more about Java. And also we have Python. And also in the Python in summer, we will take, we will offer the data science class. So that's all the software related. Because we have different programs to talk to the computer. So as a programmer, you need to know multiple language to talk to the computer. So even we say computer science is pure software related. But when we write a software on a computer, so that's why even you only write the program, you run the program on your computer, but sometimes you still need to know how the computer will read. So that's why the bridge between the software and the hardware actually is computer engineering. Even computer science, most we taking the software program, software class, but also we still need to know we still need to know how to make the software to work on the hardware. So that's why the computer engineering, actually you need to take software courses, but also you need to take some hardware courses. So the computer engineering kind of communicate between hardware and the software. So the hardware class, maybe you need to take additional to the programming courses. You need to take the computer architecture or computer network. So sometimes for the students interested about to be a programmer, you be the CX or CE, honestly won't be too much different. Uh, because one thing is for your computer engineering, for example, my master degree is for the computer engineering, but then I be the software engineer, but most I do is still write a program. But sometimes, of course, I need to know how to config my computer. So before we using the Unix system, so then I need to know how to make my server and the client structure. So that's I know some hardware network as well. So then to talk about the hardware, actually, if you want to do the pure hardware related courses, or you want to know how to design the CPU, how to design the RAM, or all the circuits design, then that will be the electric engineering. So that's all the hardware related. But electric engineering doesn't mean they only deal with the hardware. They still need to write some program to make the hardware work. But usually those programming language they use, we call that machine language. That's what that machine understand, computer understand how to read. And a lot of time they also need to using the assembly language because the machine language is read by the computer. But as human, we are programmer. So sometimes when we write the code, still need to be understand by the human. So that's the difference between these three different major. So then I hope you understand which one you are interested about and what you will transfer into the, on the school for your future, the next two years in the university. So right, after you understand that, that's bring us why we need to take assembling language. So I know most of you, you already took C++, Java, Python, or other software language. 
So for those programming language, we basically call they a high level language because the high level language actually can be easily to understand by human. For example, sometimes even your family, your sister, younger sister, brother, they don't understand any programming. But when you show them some program, they can quickly understand what, what means y equal to x plus 5. Right, so that's why even they are not fully understand, but the high level language is read by the human. So that's why we call that a high level language. But remember, no matter what the program you run, what program you write, you need to make them work on the computer. So that's why then sometimes our high level language will translate into the assembly language. So assembly language actually is more direct to work with the CPU. So that's why it's more efficient. So then sometimes assembly language will be also translate into the machine language. So that's why computer will understand. So in this class, we were using the assembly language Mason on the Windows system. So in this class, what you will learn from this class, like earlier we show you, our textbook is an x86 processor. So that will be the basic principle about the computer architecture on the 86 processor we're using, for example. So you will, we will focus on the 32-bit environment. Then some we have the example in the 64-bit environment. So after you understand the structure and the architecture from the hardware processor, or you can say that CPU, so then remember, we always tell you computer only understand one and zero. So that's why after we write the program in our language, how we will represent those data in the computer hardware. So that's what we'll talk about how the data representation from our program, from our code to represent in the one and the zero computer world. And after that, since we computer only understand one and zero, a lot of time you see like your if else statement. If the condition is true, we do something. So the computer only understand the Boolean algebra. And also a lot of time the true and false can help them to understand the digit logic. So those digit logic is what the hardware will really deal with. So that's in the first three chapters, we will focus on the hardware part and understand the Boolean algebra and the data representation. And we'll also talk about the computer organization. So afterward from chapter three, we will show you. So the first three weeks, you may not really need to write any code yet. But then from the fourth week, when we move forward to the chapter three, we will give you the example about the assembly language and we will help you to config your Visual Studio on Windows system to write the Mason code on your Visual Studio. So then afterward for the chapter four, we will show you some basic instruction from the assembly language. So assembly language is the programming language. So of course we will have the if else statement. We have some logic, Boolean algebra logic to check. And also you can write the for loop or while loop. But the for loop while loop may be different syntax for we talk about the looping. So that's in the chapter five, we will talk about that. So then we will talk about, right, in a similar language, you can just like C++, you can write a function. In Java, you can write a method. But in a similar language, we call that a procedure. So the syntax will be a little different but the concept is the same as the function in C++. Then continue with the chapter six, seven, eight, and nine after the midterm. Then we will talk about, besides we talk about advanced procedure, how to write different, uh, more feature we can use when we write a procedure. And also like we say, computer deal with one and zero. So we know one character is one byte. But in one byte, we have eight bits. So the best thing is in assembly language, we can direct access the bit. So we'll see how the bit manipulation. Then we will talk about string operation 
and we will talk about the floating point operation.